Hello, Trent here. Um, it's been a little while, a couple weeks since we've posted. Sorry about that. Um, everything's been going great. In fact, uh, I've been pretty busy and I will show you what I've been doing. Um, here I am up on one of my sheds. Um, let me flip this around and I'll show you kind of in context where I am. Um, so here's the house and the driveway and go over here. And here's a bunch of stuff that I cleared out of this shed. Um, a lot of it was here when we got here, and some of it is just storage for uh, when we, uh, after we moved in. Um, greenhouse plastic there, which I think I want to put back on the greenhouse. Anyway, um, so I'm up on the roof. Um, I've been tearing off the these old cedar shingles um, because, well, they're just really old. <laughs> There's not much left of them, actually. Um, as you can see over here, the part that I haven't touched yet um, still has a whole bunch of holes in it, and we'd like to actually use this shed. Now, I probably should have started this video um, before I got up here, but uh, I'm going to climb down here carefully, and I'll show you uh, kind of what the plan is. All right, I'm gonna go. Not much room here. All right, flip it around again. All right, just so you see where we are. Here's the inside of this shed. It measures um, about 14 by 16 feet, which is awesome because I was just about to uh, build a new. 12 by 16 foot shed and it was going to cost me about a thousand dollars and uh, this one was kind of being used you know <laughs> for storage but it was a horrible mess um, a lot of stuff like I said was not even ours it had just been um, left here by the the previous uh, owners uh, or mechanics and a lot of that stuff is stuff that I'll never use and didn't even know what it was but this area is going to be perfect for, and this is what, it, what I've been working on the past couple weeks, it'll be perfect for framing, for framing my paintings, or rather for making frames. Um, I bought a really expensive and really nice um, corner nailer, um, like a, a V nailer. Um, I don't know if any of you who have worked in making picture frames before, or if you look on the back back of most pre-made picture frames, you'll see a little V-shaped nail that kind of goes in the corner and hooks the two pieces together. So I bought one of those machines, and right now it's in my art studio. I may show you um, in a minute. And uh, it'll just fit really nicely in here. And I've been learning how to quickly make frames uh, from a friend of mine. I finally got the machine, and I think it'll probably uh, maybe go there. Um, so, as you can see, this is pretty nice wood. Um, it's been badly um, drenched just after um, many years of winters and rain. I don't know if it was used as a smokehouse at one time. There's some evidence here that, you know, of creosote buildup. Perhaps it was a smokehouse. Very old barn. Uh, this was, looks like it was the original door, well, the original doorway, probably not the original door. In fact, I'm pretty certain it's not. But uh, as you can see, they've put uh, metal siding on it. So on the inside, it's really cool. I, I love old, old wood like this, old barns. And on the outside, they've, for better or worse, they've put this um, steel siding on it. Um, I think it's probably a good good thing that they did that, um, except it would have been nicer if if the uh, if the roof had kept the rain out because now this metal that's on the outside of the shed now you can see kind of how big it is. This metal that was on the outside of the shed um, kind of kept that moisture in there, and I hope it didn't cause any lasting damage. But that old wood tends to tends to withstand things like that a little better than new wood. In fact, um, some of the wood that we took out of the house, um, two by fours, you know, we laid in a pile and some of them touched the dirt and they have been 
holding up better than, or I should say as well as, at least, as well as uh, pressure treated lumber that you might get at the store. So it appears that that shed is made out of that kind of stuff, that quality of wood. All right, here we are in the studio. Okay, just a minute, Banj. <laughs> so here's this machine that I bought. And it does only one thing, but it's it's one thing that will help me um, immensely in my in my endeavor to create my own frames. And here is one that I've almost finished. <laughs> and this was before I, I bought it. I bought this machine. And it doesn't have those V-nails in it. But these are the kinds of things that that this machine puts in there. So it works like that. And uh, it makes the process just uh, go a lot faster. Whereas with this one I had to, and it's not finished yet, I still have to uh, gold leaf this and antique it, you know, three or four more steps. But, but those parts are pretty fast actually. But um, whereas that one took about four hours to do um, with this, uh, diminishing the wait time and diminishing the guesswork, uh, I think it'll be, uh, well, the goal is to be able to do a frame of any size within about an hour. And uh, this painting is one I've been working on for two weeks because of this project, because <laughs> I've been trying to, uh, well, just get set up with um, different tools and materials to to uh, get, get that going. I'll save a lot of money every year. Uh, last year I spent, <laughs> probably $5,000 on frames, and uh, this year I've spent $3,000 on ma the materials, including the machinery, to to make about $6,000 worth of frames if I were to buy them. So already I've saved money, and I even figured that if I, even if I had to spend the $1,500 every year for that machine, that comes with a one-year warranty, <laughs> so even if I had to, had to buy it brand new every single year, um, I'd still be saving money, so I think that's a good investment. But it's hard to hard to spend a lot of money all at once. Obviously, we're back outside, um, back at the shed. Uh, we have all this this old metal that uh, I bought from a neighbor, and uh, we have looks like we'll have just enough to to do this, the, do the the roof. So I'm gonna. Uh, tear off all the shingles, pound in or take out all the nails so I can lay, lay some tar paper down and, uh, and then put on the corrugated metal. Now, tar paper, I've discovered, is extremely important. I'll show you over here why. This is something I've had to learn the hard way. Now, um, you'd think that, unless you have experience with it, um, you would probably naturally think, like I did, that just having metal on a roof would keep the keep the water out and uh, be just fine. And <laughs> it does keep the outside water out. It, um, you know, I've painstakingly filled all the holes with, well, except those ones that I can see now. <laughs> so most of the holes um, with sealant. And, uh, you know, so it was rainproof, but the thing with metal is it, it condenses, it gets cold and condenses the uh, atmospheric moisture, and then it creates its own rainstorm inside. So even if you keep the outside rain out, it'll condense on that metal and still rain down on, on your expensive stuff and on the rafters themselves, as you can see there. It's unfortunate, so I'm gonna have to take, I didn't do this, um, it was done that way, and I, I, I assumed it was right, and they probably did too. But it does need, um, need either plywood or something else to give it a deck, OSB or something like that, and then the tar paper, because inevitably that metal will, um, will condense the air and it'll, it'll get wet on the other side, underside, no matter what. Uh, I was actually up on the house fixing a part where I had 
neglected to do that. And there's one other part that I need to do. I need to take that all off and hopefully not be faced with a whole bunch of rotted uh, plywood, but it hasn't been that long. So, you know, learn as you go. One thing I'll say is when you learn from experience, you certainly remember it better <laughs> than if you read it about it somewhere else. Uh, I could have saved time by, uh, I, I knew, I knew of course that people use, uh, use tar paper, but for some reason I didn't think about the implications. Anyway, whatever, live and learn, as I said. Okay, well, I'm gonna get back to work on, on the shed and uh, I will um, hopefully be done and uh, set up making frames by the next time uh, I uh, talk to you, which hopefully won't be that long from now, because now that we're sort of settled with this, um, this whole project, um, I'm eager to, to get back to what I would call normal life. <laughs> I'm tired of building. I just want to get to work on uh, creating. Um, okay. Well, thanks for joining me and us, and we'll see you soon. Bye.